Next up, we've got Patty Nickel from uh, Everum Resources. Everum is a re more re relatively recent entrant into the uh, prospect generator business model group. And uh, Patty comes with a financial background. He runs a very, very tight ship. Money is not wasted there. And just last, uh, last year, he brought on a geologist, uh, Lane Charest, who I spend a lot of time with in Mexico, excellent ore finder, responsible for the discovery of El Cesal in Mexico and Marlin in uh, Guatemala, both of which turned into great mines for Gold Corp. Patty? Thanks very much, Brent. Okay, thanks very much for coming to my presentation today. Um, the topic of my presentation is, we're, we're new to this conference, so more of a general corporate update for, for the audience, but also uh, to talk about opportunity. And in the context of, of what Brent has mentioned here about purchasing assets in the market that we're in today. Um, after the presentation, as you know, we've only got 10 minutes, so please feel free to come by the booth and ask any questions you might have. Here's our forward-looking information. So, quick background on the company. Uh, like my colleagues up here in this segment of the presentations, we're a prospect generator, primarily based in Mexico. That's where we got our start in 2011, but since branched out into Southwest United States and then more recently into British Columbia. We have three active alliances, or three active partnerships and alliances today. Two are with First Majestic Silver, that's in the Sonoran Valley, Gold and Silver Exploration, that's in Sonora State, Northwest Mexico. We also have an alliance with ArcelorMittal SA, that's a, a very large steel manufacturer. We're actually looking for iron ore deposits for them in southern Sonora. So all of our, most of our operations today take place uh, in Sonora. Working capital today is 3.3 million, that's largely of, as a result of a financing that we completed uh, in late 2015. The graphic on the right, um, unfortunately some of the uh, values are missing on the right hand side, but um, exploration expenditures between 2011 and 2015. This gives you a, an idea of the prospect generator model, how well it works. Um, that pie chart uh, represents all of our exploration expenses. The gold piece of the pie that you see there is our investment. That's about $3.3 million, or sorry, $3.2 million over the past five years. What's that, what that has translated into is approximately $15.5 million of partner-funded exploration. So it gives you a good idea that despite the market, we've been quite busy over the past five years, and it really gives you a good idea of how well the prospect generator model can work in terms of leveraging your exploration dollars using other people's money. This also gives you a sense of how busy we've, we've been. These are our partners, uh, past and present, over the past five years. There's eight of them. And the one thing that you'll notice about our partnerships is that they're all with cash flowing companies. All are mid-tier senior producers. Some are royalty companies. We do a lot of the work on behalf of our, our joint venture partners. And, and the nice thing about having cash flowing companies it meant, is meant that all of our budgets have been met. All of our taxes with respect to our option projects have been made and cash payments that are due to the company, they've all come in. So it's been a great experience working with, with these groups. Back in 2011, when we first got going, uh, acquiring projects was difficult. Um, generating projects uh, was highly competitive. There was a lot of players in this space. Uh, we would go after targets, all of us going after the same targets all at once dealing with local landowners, which include ajitos, which include ranchers, everybody had their hands out. So the cost of even early stage generative exploration was high. Buying projects from companies was almost impossible, and it was a, a game that Everham didn't participate in back then. But as time has gone on, 2011, 12, 13, 14, we've seen the value of properties come down. And the first sort of properties that came available were the ones that, that you know, companies like Everham we passed on, they just, they didn't make the grade. But finally in 2014 and on into 2015, we started to see good assets come available. And even in the past month, and what you're seeing with this graphic here is now the majors are starting to let their assets go to. And this is a clear sign that we're in the, in the very bottom of the market. And these are Canadian companies, they're American companies, European companies, all facing the same dilemma of, of trying to maintain these projects. They're not, they're cutting back on staff, they're cutting back on exploration stage projects. And so this is a graph that, that shows you sort of the, a similar pattern that we saw back in the late 90s, or actually sort of mid to late 90s, 
back between 1995 and 99, we saw the, uh, the TSX indices uh, develop in the same sort of pattern went down and at that same time, I was, I was around back then and I recall a lot of the projects that came available from major companies. And we're seeing that again in 2011 and 2016, we see a, a very similar pattern, very similar stage of, of um, the, the, the uh, cycle that we're in right now. And it's important that you try to pick up good assets today because what we really want to participate in is this going forward in the next run up. When that happens, we don't exactly know, but everyone's trying to get itself positioned today to take, uh, to see good value creation in the future. So, how do we do this? Seizing the opportunity. We have two areas that we look at in trying to acquire projects. One is business development, and that includes our directors, that people like Paul Van Eden, you might have heard of him, David Caulfield, and along with a lot of good financial people, exploration people in the team. We're monitoring projects, we're monitoring companies, we monitor, monitor the financial health, and really it's having a good network of contacts to make that happen. So that's something that we're doing on a continual basis. Exploration, you have to have a very strong exploration team. And we've had that since 2011, but we added to that, and as, as Brent mentioned, we added a man by the name of Elaine Charest to the mix uh, earlier last year. Elaine found El Cezal, which um, is in the Sierra Madres, 1.75 million ounces. He found it in the 1990s, early 90s, and I believe Glamis bought it, uh, along with the Marlin deposit, which was a lesser known target. It was an early stage target at the time, but they paid about $300 million. So the company ended up going into Gold Corp, where both mines have, have operated. So um, very, very well-known guy in Mexico, very well-respected and uh, very strong uh, background and, and a great leader for our team. And so looking at um, our acquisition process, we started this last year, and I'm going to give you two examples of, of what we've done to date. This is a project we announced actually la last Monday. It's something we've been working on since the middle of last year. This is called Cerro Cascaron, and this is a direct result of Elaine's efforts in working with the company. This is a high-grade epithermal gold target. This is located in the Sierra Madres, and the map that you see on that graphic gives you an idea. That's the belt that exists in uh, western Mexico. Those little yellow dots represent multi-million ounce deposits and or mines. And so what we see in Cerro Cascaron is, is the potential to be like an El Cezal, where 1.75 million ounces, or Pomarejo, Ocampo, Mulatos. And so this is a very prolific belt for us. The neat thing about Cerro Cascaron is that it's a rare find. It's never been explored for with modern exploration techniques. The last round of exploration that took place on Cerro Cascaron was likely in the 1800s. So it's never been explored. It's never been drilled. And so this is the exact type of target that our exploration partners want to see. So we're very excited to have this today. So exploration for us, early stage exploration, started back in uh, the fall of last year. And we've targeted sort of, well, several different zones in the property. But what the one that really came out was called Serpiente Dorada, or the Golden Snake. And early stage exploration, as I mentioned, only 34 rock samples, limited mapping but lots of multi-grade material. 1,600 grams is, is the highest, but lots of uh, material over, over a gram. Um, lots of visible gold on this area. It's about a 300 meter by 200 meter area. I do have a sample back at the booth, so please come by after my presentation and come have a look. It's, it's a pretty neat uh, specimen. Elsewhere in the project, there's eight other targets. This is within a, a 70, square, 70 square kilometer project, so it's got a good regional size to it. Um, eight targets, uh, 140 samples, grades up to 52 grams. So we're very excited. Early days, we're working on this as we speak, but with the intent to get this project worked up to a point we can put it into a partner's hands. This is our other project we picked up last year. This is called Ball Creek, and this is a, a direct effort of our business development program. This is a copper gold porphyry target located in northwest British Columbia in the Golden Triangle. So you've got uh, deposits like Bruce Jack or KSM, Galore Creek, Shaft Creek, SK, which is a past producer, and also Red Chris, which is currently producing. Um, this is a project that was sitting in a distressed company. It had several million dollars spent on it in the past. We picked it up for $150,000. So it's a great find for us, great buy. 
We've taken the data that existed on the project. We redid a lot of reinterpretation work. We did our own reconnaissance work uh, throughout uh, the summer of 2015 and spent the fall doing all the, the, the data uh, work and putting it all back together. And so what we have on this project now is we have eight drill-ready targets. Um, we just got all the, the, the maps, the documents put together, so this one's ready for option. And so this is the type of project that we'll try to put into a partner's hands um, over the course of 2016. Um, running out of time here. So final slide, um, this is our capital structure. I won't go to it in too much detail. Um, with the exception of the fact that we have the financial wherewithal to take us through to Q2 of 2018. So we can go find projects, acquire projects, uh, and not worry so much about this market, but with the idea of getting ourselves positioned. Uh, insiders, uh, along with Altius Minerals, own about 25%, so we're well, we're well held uh, um, amongst the group. Uh, 50 million shares outstanding. No stock option plan, so that's something that I'm happy to share discuss with you at, at the booth as well. And I think my time is up. Great, thanks very much.